Hello, uh, my name is Kathy Zhang. I'm a principal architect at Huawei. I'm also the um, project lead of the OpenStack Neutron service, service function chain project. Uh, my name is Igor Duarte Cardoso, a uh, software engineer at Intel in China and Ireland. I'm from Portugal. I've been working on service function chaining, mainly for Neutron networking SFC. And I'll be talking with Kathy today about SFC graphs, uh, NSH, SFC encapsulation, and how we can do that using networking SFC. Thank you. Okay. So I start first. So today uh, our topic is about how you can empower your NFV services through uh, the OpenStack service function chaining and the service function chain graph. So first I'm going to go through um, the service chain logical model and the API of existing OpenStack service function chain. So the uh, OpenStack service function chain API is composed of two parts. The first part is a flow classifier. The second part is a port chain. The flow classifier specifies the classification rules that, is, that, I, that I use to classify the flow, which will go through the uh, service chain. And the port chain um, is consisted, uh, consists of an uh, ordered sequence of service functions. So in this example, uh, the port chain consists of uh, a firewall service function, and then an IPS service function, and then a video optimizer service function. So each service function could consist of you know, um, multiple instances. For example, like in this example, the firewall service functions consists of two instances. IPS consists of three instances. And the video optimizer consists of uh, two instances. So those are for low distribution purpose. And each service function instance is modeled, is represented um, by a neutron port of that service function instance. Um, and then the neutron port of those functional-like service instances are grouped together to form the port pair group. So the port chain is actually specified by an ordered sequence of port pair groups. So like traffic flow from uh, originate from a source will go through this uh, first port pair group, which will do the load distribution to select the instance uh, for the firewall, and then go to the second um, um, service function, and then go to the third, and then reach the destination. So this slide shows um, more detail the logical models of the service function chain. So we have, as we mentioned before, we have four logical uh, entities, port chain, port pair group, port pair, and flow classifier. So I'm going to talk about port pair first. So in port pair, that represents uh, a specific service function instance. So you specify in the API, you specify the ingress port and egress port of that uh, service function. So that service function can run on a VM, which will be the uh, neutron port, right? Or can run on a container or physical device. A container also has a neutron port um, using the, uh, um, the VM, um, VLAN aware VM. And then there's also another um, um, parameter you can specify for service function. Service function parameters. For example, you can specify whether this service function is a layer two type or layer three type. Or what is the weight for that service function in the load distribution in the group so that you can do more smart uh, load distribution. And then these, the port pair, multiple port pairs can be grouped together into a port pair group. So in port pair group, you specify the list of port pairs. And then you can also specify port pair group parameters, such as you know, the, um, the hashing field for that port pair group, what hashing field to use for your load distribution algorithm. And there could be other port pair group um, parameters for future extension. Um, and then there's the flow classifier. So here you can specify any combination of these fields to, to classify your flow. For example, you can specify a source, an IP address range, or a list of IP, address range, IP addresses, or destination IP address, or like you know, logical source port, or like the uh, TCP port or UDB port, either source port or destination port, any combination. 
You can also space it up to the layer 7 parameters. And that's for the future extension. The one. Okay, so um, so how we are going to can, how we can form a chain graph um, based on the OpenStack service chains. Um, so there are two cases here. One case is when the traffic flow goes through the sequence of service function, the classification rules change. So like for this case, you know some service function could modify the end tuple of the traffic flow. Um, for example, NAT, very simple case, it's going to modify the IP address. Then in this case, right, we can, uh, we can handle this case by creating two port chain, two service chains to form the chain graph. For example, we can create um, port chain one and port chain two. So the original flow is from that logical source port P1 to the destination IP address. So for port chain one, we specify the flow classifier as the source port is from P1, destination IP address is IP1. And then that flow will go to service function one, service function two. The second port chain, we specify the source port now is originate from P2. And then the destination IP address now is changed to IP2. And then this traffic flow will go through service function three and service function four. So we can concatenate these two chains together. We form the, uh, a chain graph. Of course, we, uh, in the later slide, we're going to show more complicated cases built on this you know, uh, theory. So, um, so another case is um, for the, the classification rules do not change. So in this case, it's simpler. So for example, in here, right, we have one chain and the red line shows the first port, pair, port chain and the black shows the second port chain and the green shows the third port chain. So, they are, so the first port chain is classified by flow classifier one. It goes through service function A, B, E, F. The second is classified by flow classifier two. It goes through A, B, um, D, G. These are different service functions. And the third is classified by flow classifier three. It goes through service function B, C, F. So you can see that you know, some service function can handle you know, multiple chains. So these we can form a chain graph just by you know, combine, group them together as a, a, a chain graph. We're going to show in later slide how you specify in the API you know, to group this together. Now I'm going to hand over to Igor to go through this in more detail. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'll be talking mainly about a new, a new resource for networking SFC called SFC Graph. Um, it's in very much the same fashion as the first kind of uh, chain that Kathy presented, where the classification rules change during the chain. So uh, I'll start by why do we need SFC graphs? What can we do with them? Um, Essentially, we have two to three reasons for doing that. We may have service functions that change the classification of traffic. So the incoming traffic is of a certain classification, but the outgoing traffic will be of a different classification because the function has made changes to the traffic. Or we might have um, certain service functions with class classification capabilities, advanced ca classification capabilities that are able to go deeper in, in, in the traffic in the packets and detect other kinds of classifications that uh, the main classifier may not be able to detect. And in both of these cases, we may want to branch out of our current chain uh, depending on these, uh, classific these classification criteria. Or we, we may just want to have a dependency between port chains, between chains. Um, we, we may have many different port chains depending on the same chain regardless of classification. Okay, this is more or less a consequence of the first uh, two reasons. So, um, next. So, to justify this, why introducing an SFC graph resource, I'll show you a couple of use cases. To start with, uh, I have a very simple academic uh, use case where we get, initially, some encrypted traffic uh, inside an IPsec tunnel. Could be something else, but uh, just some encrypted traffic, which is then um, 
sent to a first service function, uh, an IPsec external terminator, terminator, which will decapsulate and decrypt the traffic. And we will then know what is the actual classification inside of, of, of that traffic that we did not know beforehand because it was encrypted. So this, this is an illustration of um, the first scenario where we don't yet know the, um, or actually where, where we change the classification of traffic because initially all traffic or IPsec traffic go, got into the chain, but now we know that it's actually TCP or something else. So the classification has changed and we now are in a position to better decide what the next function should be. So if it's TCP, it goes to a TCP optimizer. That's the TO function uh, at the top. If it's not, it goes to some other function, a load balancer, for example. Um, and in here, we have three port chains, three networking SFC port chains, um, which are very similar to service fun function paths in IETF SFC. Uh, so the, for the first chain, we just look at all traffic coming from a certain source, an IPsec source. Uh, it could be a neutron port, could be the virtual router. We send it to the first service function. And for the next two chains, they will both depend on that initial PC1 chain, the first chain, to, to, to be processed. And the difference between these two branches will be um, the actual classification, if it's TCP or not. But in both of the branches, we have a dependency. Traffic first needs to go through PC1. Okay, so that's the first use case. Then I have uh, one, another use case, slightly more complex. Um, I've taken it from the IETF 89, uh, some slides from IETF 89 regarding mobility use cases uh, in SFC. It identifies a video optimizer use case chain and we will focus on just that rectangle there because all of the rest doesn't really change the SFC graph. It, it would only make the, the figure even more complex than, than, um, than this, okay? So this is the focus of, of that use case. So we get all of the traffic from a P gateway. Uh, it goes through a load balancer and then we detect whether it's TCP port 80 or not. If it is, it goes to a DPI function the packet inspector, which has advanced classification capabilities. Uh, that illustrates the, the second reason for why we should have SFC graphs. It has advanced classification capabilities and it's able to know whether we actually have video inside of that traffic or not. And if we have, we go through a video optimization function, that's the VO function. If we don't have, it just goes through the load balancer. In this case, we have five port chains, okay? The initial uh, chain just looks at all of the traffic coming from the P, P gateway. Uh, and the other chains all depend on some other chain. Uh, I'll specifically, specifically mention PC4, uh, which is the chain which is the chain that depends on the chain of the DPI function. And so the traffic will go through the DPI function. And if it's video, it then goes to the V video optimizer function, and that's chain four. So you can see the advanced capabilities um, use case for a classifier. You can see dependencies between chains. You can see two examples of branching in a chain. And here we, here we have um, an SFC graph. Now, <clears throat> how can we achieve SFC graphs? How can we bring them? to networking SFC specifically. Um, how can we make sure that the traffic from a certain port chain will reach the next port chain and only that traffic, not any other traffic, because there's a dependency. We need to make sure that traffic doesn't get mixed up in different port chains when the classification is the same. There needs to be some kind of segregation, some kind of encapsulation, chain or path identification. So we we take a look at the SFC encapsulation concept from IETF SFC, which has uh, researched this in, in, in very deep detail. And the main thing about SFC encapsulation is that we have um, a way of identifying paths in a chain or a graph. And we fully encapsulate, we are able to fully encapsulate the whole frames. So 
there's no loss of information or context, context, and we know exactly where in a chain or where in a graph we are, thanks to um, service function path uh, identification. Okay, a service function path is essentially a port chain in networking SFC. Um, NSH is the protocol being developed and um, detailed to be the SFC encapsulation protocol in ITF SFC. Uh, it's a proposed standard. It, it's still a draft yet, um, but it's the only SFC encapsulation protocol being developed specifically for this purpose. It includes a service path identifier and a service index to contain the service function path information so that we know exactly where in the chain we are. This sync encapsulation allows us to then do branching in our chains and consequently create SFC graphs. <coughs> Here's the NSH um, protocol. You can specifically see the SPI and SI fields, which uniquely identify the path of our packets and consequently the, um, the chain and the graph. Now, specifically to networking SFC. What have we done so far? What are we going to do to bring SFC graphs and NSH to, to the project? A first, change was, a first change was already submitted and merged, uh, which is a chain ID field in the API. The chain ID is, an, is a parameter uh, of the port chain resource. And it's essentially the same as the SPI here, the service path identifier. Okay. It, uh, it uniquely identifies the service function path or a port chain in networking SFC. It's the same thing. Um, it's been, uh, it has been merged already. And even though we don't really need to expose that in the API, we just had to use it in the backend to properly segregate traffic. It's very useful if we want to share um, ch the chain identifications across the manual layer, let's say. So the chain ID parameter is there as part of port chain, highlighted in blue. Um, it's the last parameter in the port chain resource. And this figure here um, illustrates why chain ID is important to when, when, when it is shared across the manual layer, across NFVO, NFVO orchestrator, and the VNF manager. So what can we do by exposing that chain ID there? We can have networking SFC with uh, the enabled Neutron backend, for example, Open vSwitch, managing chains with certain SPIs. But we can then tell NFEO about those chain IDs, which can then tell VNF manager, which can then tell the service functions that are deployed, which might be classifiers as well. So we can have, essentially, we can enable external classifiers alongside the neutron classifier provided by OpenV switch. Yeah. So we can have, for example, a layer 7 DPI function doing classification based on layer 7 um, fields, parameters, attributes, and, and inserting traffic in the appropriate chains, in the appropriate paths, based on what the orchestrator has, has um, deployed. Okay? And we can have a very consistent deployment of service functions and classifiers, both built in and managed by Neutron and externally deployed using a VNF manager. Okay. Second change is to actually enable NSH. So up until now, um, networking SFC has only used MPLS. Um, and MPLS is not exposed to the service functions at the moment. So there's a logical SFC proxy. SFC proxy is another definition from IETF SFC, which before sending the packets to every function, um, Open vSwitch will, will take out the MPLS um, shim layer so that the functions will understand the packets as <coughs> typical Ethernet IP packets. <coughs> so this patch enables NSH support. It enables NSH exposed to the VMs, so without taking the NSH header before sending to the, to the VMs. It still supports uh, an SFC proxy, so OpenV switch is still able to remove the header if we specify in the API that we don't want NSH to be exposed to the VMs. You can do that. 
Um, and yeah, this is the first part to enable SFSync optimization in networking SFC. It still doesn't enable SFC graphs though. That's the final patch. Oh, by the way, this, these are the changes. You can see in port chain, the chain parameters field um, inside it's a dictionary. It has a, a key called correlation. If we set that to NSH, then our port chain will be NSH based. The other change as part of this patch in the API is at the port pair resource. Again, service function parameters, it's a dictionary. The key correlation, if we set that to NSH, then NSH header will be exposed to the VMs. The VMs will receive NSH. If we don't specify NSH there, um, the OBS driver, which has been the, the backend that, um, that, that has NSH support so far in the patch that I've submitted, it will execute an SFC proxy and will remove the NSH header before send, send, sending to the VM. <coughs> All right, final patch, SFC graphs. For now, it's only an, an API patch. It provides a new resource. You can see here, uh, bottom right, SFC graph. It's a dictionary of port chains. The keys are the, the previous port chains, and the values are the next port chains, are the branches of the port chains. So port chain one will branch to port chain two, or port chain three, um, in the example depending on different classification criteria. The classification criteria will be provided by the flow classifier associated to port chain two and port chain three. For, for port chain two, as an initial chain, same thing will happen. So this is how um, we, we can have SFC graphs in networking SFC. The API, API patch has been submitted. The implementation still needs to come in uh, the next few days. Now, I'll go back to the use case of the video optimizer but I will expand it a little bit more so we can better understand what happens internally. This is a service plane view of our chain, of our graph. What if we, what if we want to have a look at the forwarding plane of the same, the same graph? Here it is. Um, this forwarding plane view shows the data plane elements that are used to, 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 to have the, the the chain, the graph uh, shown here. So initially, there's um, a classifier that will get all of the, all of the traffic from, from, from the big gateway and will send it to a service function forwarder. That's another definition from ITF SFC. The service function forwarder essentially is a logical element that looks at um, service function path information, SPI, SI, and decides what's, what, what the next hop is for that, for that chain. So classifier will insert the NSH header, CL1, and will send the packets to the forwarder. The forwarder will look at, at the SPI and SI information at the, at the NSH header and will send uh, the packets to the load balancer. Now, after the load balancer, we have a, an example of a branching, branching scenario, so a branching chain there. Same thing will, will happen. CL1, um, the classifier will set the service function path information based on the classification of traffic. So at that point, it will check whether it's TCP port 80 or not, and will insert the appropriate uh, NSH header. It will then send the packets to the forwarder, and it will look up its NSH mapping table, looking for the SPI slash SI that the classifier ha has inserted, and will then select the next stop accordingly. Okay. The, same, the same thing happens for the classifier 2 and SFF at the top after the DPI. The only difference is that CL2, classifier 2, is, a, is an external classifier that will usually be co-located with the DPI. Re remember, these are all logical, logical functions, logical resources. CL1 and SFF can be co-located together, as in the case of OpenVSwitch, the OpenVSwitch driver for networking SFC. Or CL2 and DPI can be co-located. They can be a VM doing the, that job of both inspecting traffic and classifying traffic. These are all logical elements. And that's all with me. Okay. So here's some um, public uh, status update. So we already have two official releases, Liberty and Metaka. 
on the new features for my calculus, the add chain ID to port chain parameters, which Igor just mentioned about, you know, talk, has already talked about why we need to add that. And then we also add weight to the service function parameter to allow, you know, more smart um, load distribution. Um, we also add the port pair group parameters for the, like, you know, L2, L3 type. And then we also add a, a function that can, which can dynamic insert and remove service function to or from a port chain. Of course, we add, you know, tempest test, functional test, which are all those automatic tests. Um, we're going to uh, do a, a, the Newton release in December 2016. And for this new release, we are going to add support for symmetric chain, exact match based flow rule creation deletion. And here are some information links if you would like to know more about this project. Um, for this NSH support, we will do um, probably we will do after the Newton release, and that also has dependence on that NSH patch being uh, merged into the OVS. So here are some reference on the um, on the IETF and service function chain architecture, you know the data path encapsulation spec and also some other um, NSH related uh, information, including the OBS NSH patch information. Okay, that's it, thank you. Any questions? Okay, yeah. So your question is, how can you use a class file at the? Yeah, yeah. Currently, is there a backend for YouTube that can do the classification with or with their service, for example? Uh, okay, for so. For no. No, currently the class file is implemented in the OVS, so it um, do up to the um, layer four. It doesn't do up to the layer seven yet. So for the layer seven, you know, you will need a DPI device to do that classifier. Okay, so question is, oh, maybe, That's yeah, it's a microphone. If you can go to the if microphone, If you have any questions, yeah, easier. exactly. Go to the, oh. yeah, the mics, please. Uh, good presentation. Uh, we liked it. Uh, one question I have is, uh, since we talk about graphs, VNF forwarding graph, and you say here SFC graph, so are they different? And another question, continuing on that, do you have any domain-specific language for the service function chaining which we can use? For chaining? Okay, so for the first question, VNFFG, right? Yeah. It is different from SFC graph as, as uh, presented here. So VNFFG, the main difference would be uh, almost everything, but VNFFG is you have your VNFs, your service functions, and then you, you, you connect them through different chains. Okay, all of the, you show, you present all of the, all, all of the chains that go through your multiple service functions from the beginning to the end. So you have a, an initial classification for every chain, and then you just draw how, how they connect the different functions together, and then you've got your PNF forwarding graph. Now, SFC graph is, is different. It is scoped, it's like an extension to a chain, but with branches. So it, it's still scoped to a, to a particular use case, um, but instead of starting from the beginning, having an initial classification and going until the end, you can branch out of your current chain based on different criteria. But it's still scoped uh, as for a particular uh, use case. Whereas VNFFG is, you know, all of your chains and how they connect to different functions. So this is local. That is, who is okay. the superset? VNFFG is the superset and SFC is the uh, chaining is the subset of that? Can I, can I consider VNFFG yeah, as the full cases, right? uh, chaining and SFC chaining is just a subset of that? N not really, but you could present an SFC graph uh, by using an, a VNFFG. What, to, what you would say as the classification for the chains of the VNFFG 
is that in this case. It, the classification would be a dependency on an, another chain. Okay? You would have to say hey, the classification is another, an, another chain first. Okay? You could draw it like that. Okay, so it's a dependency chain. Yeah. Okay, got it. Second, the, that was related to is there any specific DSL, domain specific language? Like you are writing chain paths and all that. Can I consider that as some kind of a DSL, domain specific language for service function chain? We haven't worked on, a, on any a DSL. Um, okay. At least for, for the time being, it's just a dictionary of origin okay. dependencies. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Thanks for the talk. Uh, so my question is, can the classifier exist outside of Neutron? And if so, how does that work? You want to take yeah. um, Yes, you, 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 can, you can have an, a classifier outside of Neutron. Um, you, need, you just need to make sure that it is fed with the um, appropriate chain IDs, SPIs, so that it classifies accordingly to the setup of functions, functions and chains that, that you have. It has so to be consistent. Yeah, we have a slide on this. Hold on, let me go to, yeah, here, right? So this slide shows that you can have the classifier outside of the OVS. When you say neutron, neutron is a more the management control plan, right? So this right. is on the data path, right? Yeah. You can have the classifier out of, outside of the OVS, but you need the VF manager, an orchestrator to coordinate the chain ID. For example, you do the DPI, right, as a separate device, you do the classification you have to insert the chain ID, right? right? That chain ID has to be recognized by the switch and, to and know. This, and this naturally requires NSH? Uh, yeah, so a chain ID right, could so be. So without NSH, this functionality is not possible, right? Yeah, NSH, or you can use, if NSH, since currently NSH is not merged into OVS yet, so we use the uh, MPLS label to represent the chain ID as a placeholder for the chain ID. You need some field for the chain ID. That, that's, that's the key. Right. Yeah, and you need some the upper layer to coordinate the chain ID to be the same chain ID it knows, right? Oh, this chain ID represents which chain, right? So you know the DPI device insert that chain ID, the service function forwarder, which could be a, a, a virtual switch, either OVS or physical switch or other virtual switch, need to understand, okay, for that chain ID, I need to forward to which service function, what's the next hop service function. So the upper layer, like in this diagram shows, need to coordinate this information. Right, I understand. And okay. uh, just last thing, uh, you did say that the SF proxy function is already implemented. Yeah. So if the uh, VNF doesn't have an idea of what to do with the, the metadata, this wouldn't be a problem? Wouldn't be a problem, yes. Yeah. It's already implemented. So like service function proxy functionality is already implemented in right. this uh, Neutron uh, service function chain project. Cool, thank you very much. Yeah. You're it, welcome. Including with NSH. Yeah. yeah. I had a question uh, regarding the load balancing function. How does the load balancing work within, uh, so you mentioned weight, but I didn't see a lot of information on that, so maybe you can elaborate on how it load balances between, uh, within the port pair. Okay, so, um, so the weight, you can specify the weight for the, for example, if a service function, um, for, for our service function type, right, you have three instances, right? You can specify the weight for each service uh, function instance and then that information will pass down through the driver and then to the, um, for, for example, for OVS driver pass, the native pass, or a new trans native pass, right? And then, you know, the OVS agent will, based on that weight, to do automatic um, load distribution based on different weight. You give a higher weight, it's going to be selected. That service function with a higher weight will be selected to be used for the chain pass, I mean, more prob probability, yeah. Okay, it's not based on the, uh, the amount of traffic going through each of the, it's not dynamically adjusted by SFC or anything like that, right? Uh, we just specify the weight and then uh, based on the traffic, it doesn't get readjusted, it's just static. Yeah, so once, you know, so you, you specify the weight for that chain, right? And then for that flow classifier, right? So based on that weight, uh, a service function will be selected for that traffic flow. Once it's selected, uh, it uh, will not change. I would say it will not change. Um, but okay, so let's get into a little bit more uh, um, technical detail. 
So for, for stateful service function, once you selected the service function, you don't want to change, you know, when the service function scale out or scale in, right? You don't want to change, right? So when you scale out, you want to maintain the same service function for the previous traffic flow. But when you but but for new traffic flow when it comes, right? It depends on the weight. It can cached to a new service function. Um, so this weight is just for load distribution. You give a higher weight, it will be selected more for different uh, traffic flow. Because one service function, the same group of service function can be shared by multiple chains. We have a slide on that in the, here. For example, the service function B, you can see it's shared by three chains, right? And then if service function B, there are multiple instances then which instance you select for chain one, which instance you select for chain two and chain three, it depends on the, the weight will play a role there. Okay, so it basically depends on just that one flow, right? It's not static saying, let's say I'm redirecting from port one to, to the, the service function. So the port one traffic always goes to that service function or like for the, maybe for a session it goes through that and then for the next session it might go through a different service function. So for the same traffic flow, the same type of traffic flow, same flow classifier flow, will go through that same service function. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Follow a follow-on question from that one. So I, I understand you've got the the, the 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 waiting to do kind of load balancing across the service function instances. Um, what in this picture is doing detection of the liveness of those service function instances? So that, it, for example, it doesn't attempt to route a new traffic flow to an instance which has just gone down. Okay, that's a good question. So, that's um, so the so you are talking about the health of that service function, right? Um, that's kind of out of scope of the chain. So you need another service function manager or any health monitor to monitor that service function and then to feedback that information to the service function chain, so it knows. Okay, now that service function is out of service, so I will not you know, hash any traffic flow to that right. service function instance. Right, yeah. so you, you need some kind of external management agent to monitor the liveness and update exactly. the definitions. Okay. Exactly, yeah, but that, the life cycle of service function management is, is outside of this scope, but it's, uh, it, it needs to be coordinated together. Yeah, like you said, feedback below. Yeah, okay, thank you. that's right. Any more questions? Okay, that's it, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.